Hi, this is Tristan Moore from UAT's Learning Enhancement Center. I just wanted to give a quick tutorial on how to create an eye adaptation effect using Unreal's post-process volumes. Now this is an effect that's a little bit similar to the kind of things that you see in the HDR effects for Half-Life 2. It's a little bit different because it's handling spatial relationships rather than screen, but it creates a pretty similar effect and it's pretty easy to do. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing, I have this really um, straightforward environment where I just have a couple of interior spaces and a couple of exterior spaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to View, World Properties, and then I'm gonna go to Rendering, and I'm gonna go to Default Post-Process Settings. Now, there's a few things we're gonna wanna change. One of them is the Bloom Scale. I'm actually gonna change that to one so that it's overall a little bit more bloom than it was before. Then the bloom threshold, I'm gonna leave it one. The bloom interpolation duration, I'm going to change to three. Now every property in a post-process effect has an interpolation duration, which is how long it takes to transition. So there's categories of properties like bloom, depth of field, motion blur, etc. And they all have their own interpolation duration. So when you move in or out of a post-process volume, it's going to determine how the, uh, the transition occurs. All right, and then we're just gonna scroll down a little bit to where we have scene highlights, scene midtones, and scene shadows. So I'm gonna change the scene highlights to 0.9 on X, Y, and Z. I'm going to change the midtones to 0.9 on X, Y, and Z. And then I'm going to change the scene shadows to 0.1. Now what you'll see at this point is that the interior space looks incredibly dark and the outside space looks more natural and normal. Um, and that's exactly what we want. Before we're done with this though, we need to make sure that our interpolation duration for this scene interpolation duration is also set to three. Well, now that we've got that set up, we can start setting up our post-process volume inside the, uh, the first interior space. If you are making an object out of BSP, such as one of these kinds of environments, um, it's pretty easy to set up a post-process volume because um, I already have a subtractive brush here that's making up the inside of the space and I hit, can hit control P on the keyboard and that'll make the builder brush to be the same size as that subtractive volume that's on the inside and then I can go to add volume post-process volume then if I move my builder brush out of the way we can see that we have a post-process volume here now, obviously that's just kind of a shortcut and if you're using meshes for the bulk of your geometry, you're not gonna be able to do that. Okay, so in the post-process volume, the properties are going to be 1.5 in bloom scale, 0.3 in bloom threshold. I'm gonna change this bloom interpolation duration to three. And then for the scene highlights, I'm gonna make it pretty similar to what it was before. It's gonna be 0.9 in X, Y, and Z for the highlights, 0.9 in X, Y, and Z for the midtones, but the difference is that the scene shadows are gonna be left at their default settings. And I'm gonna take the scene interpolation duration, I'm gonna change that to three. Now we should be able to test this out and see what it looks like. If I jump into the game, you'll notice that when I'm outside, it has a certain kind of look to it, and that's pretty good, I can see what's going on. It looks really dark on the inside. So I'm gonna walk in there, and then my eyes will gradually adjust to the light on the inside. And then you also notice it gets really blurry on the outside. So if I step back out, you'll notice that the, the bright bloom gradually fades. Now when you're dealing with more complex objects and surfaces than basic box-shaped rooms, it's usually a good idea to still try to limit the number of post-process volumes that you're using just so that it's more effective for workflow and also you don't have to run the risk of the character transitioning between two different post-process volumes when they're all supposed to be the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the geometry edit mode to change my builder brush size so that I can extrude and reshape this so that it fits this L-shaped room. So if you click on the geometry mode button or hold shift two on the keyboard, then you can adjust the properties of your builder brush to actually affect the shape that you're creating, so it's not just a primitive. And if you're doing in the orthographic views, any verts that are on top of each other will be grabbed simultaneously, so you only have to click once and you can get the entire edge. I'm just gonna make this kind of slanted angle here, going all the way across the interior of the wall. Then uh, in the perspective view, I'm gonna grab the face, and then I'm gonna switch geometry tools to extrude, and then basically I can just extrude it out a little bit. And I'm not gonna really worry about where it is because I'm gonna really 
reposition those in a second. So then click off extrude, go back to edit. And if a vertex ever gets misaligned with the environment or the, the grid spacing, you can just right click it and it'll snap to the nearest grid space, which is really, really useful. So I can line these up so that they're exactly on the same plane by right clicking to get them to snap, then positioning them where I need them to be. And then I can just drag them out. And then without a whole lot of extra work, I have a proper shape for this interior space, even though it's a little bit more complicated than just what a normal box would be. That can be pretty useful. Then I can go ahead and add a volume, post-process volume. Now in some cases you might want to trigger a change in a post-process volume dynamically through a Kismet sequence. If that's the case, it's actually really, really easy to switch out different post-process volumes just by affecting their B enabled property. Let's go ahead and set up a quick scenario where we have a light turning on and then I um, adaptation occurring. First off, we have the post-process volume that we just made. Let's make our settings work for this particular context. So we're gonna have a bloom scale of 0.5, a bloom threshold of 0.3, bloom interpolation duration of three and then for the scene highlights and midtones and shadows we're gonna go with 0.8 in the highlights and midtones and then we're gonna go with zero in this uh, scene shadows and then we want to make sure that it's enabled so that we can see what's going on and then basically you see that this is when our eyes are adapted to the dark well now let's go ahead and make a copy of this by holding Control W and then we'll make an exact duplicate of what we had. Now we could leave the one that's been copied there. I just adjusted it a little bit because it'll pop slightly out of position. Um, we can leave the one that we had before and then just start adjusting the properties for this one. And this one we're actually gonna turn enabled off and we're gonna change the scene shadows to 0.2. The scene midtones will be 0.9 and the scene highlights will be 0.9. This one is actually called post-process volume three. I'm gonna go into Kismet and I'm gonna add that post-process volume. Now, if you wanna select another post-process volume, it can be a little bit annoying because they're on top of each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the scene view, which is part of the extension off of the content browser. And then you can look at all of the post-process volumes that are available. So for example, I can click on post-process volume four, which is the correct one. And then I can just add that to Kismet as well. Well, now let's quickly get this sequence working. We've got a bunch of toggleable lights here and they're currently toggled to off. If you go into the properties, I have them set to be enabled false. And then we have a, a trigger here right at this wall switch. So I'm gonna select the trigger. I'm going to right click, select add new event using trigger and it's gonna be used. I'm gonna leave all of the defaults. That's totally fine. It's not a big deal. Then I'm gonna select all of the lights. I'm gonna right click in Kismet. I'm gonna do new action, toggle, toggle. You can also hold down the T key and click to make a toggle quickly. And now with all those lights selected, I'm going to right click on the target area and I'm going to go to new object variables using point light. And we've got all of those point lights there. And actually what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to connect both of these post process volumes. And then we can go ahead and just run trigger zero used into the toggle. And that should be about it. So let's test that out and see how that works. Okay, so I'm going to walk up to the wall and boom, it's really, really bright. Let me notice the eyes sort of gradually adjust and that's just because we toggled one post-process volume and brought another one in. Okay, well that's a really quick introduction on how you could get a simple eye adaptation effect. Uh, thank you very much and make sure you check out the other tutorials and videos on the UAT Productions playlist.